We are good. All right. Well, so welcome to Teachers Eating Teachers. It is, wow, already the 26th of June. June went so fast. All right. Um, today is the last day of school in New York City. Can you believe it? They went till now. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, Those are well, some good nice days. Start. What? Those are some hot days to be in school. Yeah. You start right after Labor Day and then, yeah. Okay. And you go till now. Yeah. Okay. Because, because you have to get the seed in the ground. Um, or I don't know. No, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> um, so, hi. Um, I, I've been um, watching a little bit of what Kylie has been doing, um, and uh, she's going to share with us tonight uh, the uh, writing partners and work that she's been doing around the college admissions essay. Paul Hankins joined us for the first time last week. Uh, Paul, you'll have to unmute and introduce yourself and tell us how you do the, no, just introduce yourself. Welcome, Paul. <laughs> I am Paul Hankins. I teach uh, seniors in southern Indiana, right across the bridge from Louisville, Kentucky. Cool. And you do deal with college admissions essays. I think you mentioned that last week. I do on yeah. all sides of the college yeah. essay from uh, uh, looking at what students are doing to writing the recommendation letter on my side. Uh, which is also kind of interesting when we're hearing more and more teachers join from AI assistance to write their recommendation letters, um, which I, you know, that's a conversation for maybe tonight. <laughs> oh, cool. yeah. so AI back. plus AI equals application. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, g'day, I'm Shane. I'm a primary school teacher from um, Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. And um, I've been playing around with uh, using AI to help, um, I suppose, help myself integrate different ways of teaching writing. Christina and Jack, I see you there. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Christina Cantrell from the National Writing Project. Uh, Jack Marmerstein, I, I just go with Christina. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one thing I was thinking about is just that um, there's, I'm teaching um, a graduate class right now, and one of the students is an admissions officer, and I had never thought to ask her any questions. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I should think of some questions. Like, anyway, if we have some questions for her, maybe I'll take it back to ask her tomorrow. Yeah. What, what does she do again? She's an admissions, She's an admissions officer. officer at um, Villanova. Know. And David Cole is trying to join us. He's in one of those um, what room are you guys in modes. Um, hopefully he'll find us. And Kylie. Hi, everybody. I'm Kylie Franzak. Um, I'm a second year PhD student at Arizona State University. If any of you guys are familiar with Dr. Jessica Early, I'm working with her on this study right now. So um, She's kind of our leader of like the national writing project. So she brought me in for our central Arizona writing project. Um, I took a class last summer and that was really my first introduction into the national writing project. And that sort of led into this. Um, and I am sort of all in on all things AI. Um, still very, very new in it. And if you were to ask me a year ago how I felt about it, I would have told you I hated it. And it was going to be the end of the world for writing teachers um and then sort of opened up my worldview a little bit and i don't know had this sort of epiphany moment and asked myself why are you like this and why do you hate it so much um started asking more questions about it and that a year later led me to this um dr early asked me to teach this college admissions essay writing so i've sort of been structuring things off of um her book this real world writing for secondary students that you sort of see to the left of this room if you're not familiar with it um, and uh, just interested in using some AI and trying to get a little bit of, I guess, like preliminary just data and information on how students are using it, how they like about it, how they feel about it, um, self-efficacy when it comes to using it. So that way I can hopefully just take in a lot of information right now and uh, see what I can do with it and see where that takes me for next steps. Cool, cool. And Je Jess Early was, is in a, she, she said she was going to come. Then she said, but I'm going to be in Paris. And we said, no, you're not going to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, first you're it was, oh, yeah, I'm going to come. But then it was, 
I'm going to be in Paris, but I'm probably still going to come. And then it was, oh, just kidding. It's going to be two in the morning. So I'm so, probably so, not going to come. Say hi to Jess. She's been very involved with uh, this project. And, and so anyway, and she yep. will listen to this recording. Um, Dave, Colt, everyone else introduce themselves. And okay. you found us. Congratulations. I did. I managed to find the use the floor <laughs> system and find it, which is, uh, okay. you know. Kudos to me for that. Thank you, Paul. Mm. I'm learning to navigate Kumo space. Uh, my name is David Cole. I'm based in Berkeley, California. I uh, work with a small nonprofit called NextMap. I used to be a, write, a writing and literature teacher for many years before I went into tech and ed tech and publishing and literacy and have worked with the NWP on a bunch of interesting projects and always benefited from their thinking. So I've been tagging along in these meetings, and here mm. I am. David has been testing, may I say, positive with COVID. Um, so if he sounds a little funny, um, <clears throat> that's why. Um, and I, I just visited Berkeley to a friend's wedding. And David David and I had coffee. And then David tested positive the day after that. So I hope we're okay. <laughs> but, uh, so far, so good, David. We check in. Yep, <laughs> yep exactly. It's my first time through this rodeo. So so it's not too bad right now. No, sorry. It's not fun the very first day, but it um, seems to be on the glide path out. Not good. Anybody no. else have any big picture comments or thoughts you'd like to jump in with before we go here? <laughs> All right. So Kylie and I did not plan this, but uh, we have been working together more or less. <laughs> And on the table there, Kylie, I don't know if you see, I put PDFs, hopefully, um, to protect the students. Their, only their first names will be seen that way. And they're PDFs that anybody can see because all these documents are private. Um, but they aren't right now. <laughs> you, you, can, you can see them. Um, but you're in date. Why don't you describe the camp, the two-week camp? Um, youth, what, uh, yeah, uh, we yeah, it, yeah, yeah, about writing project. yeah, yeah, we have the central Arizona writing project is what, uh, Jess early leads. And so it's called cop. Um, and so we have, uh, I don't know, I guess like a branch of that, the young adult writing project. So we call it yop. Um, <laughs> if any of you have seen that, <laughs> what's it called? Um, the Dead Poet Society, and he makes one of the students come up on the first day and yet out a great big yop. Yeah, yop. Um, yep. <laughs> That's it. That's us. Yop. Awesome. Love it. Um, I told some, which is funny, because I told some students today that I thought about making them do that on the first day, and they're like, yeah, we're glad you didn't. Um, <laughs> so again, yeah, I was, I was approached a couple of months ago by Dr. Early, and they do this every summer, I guess. So there's um, like a session A and a session B, um, young adult writing project. And uh, there's an elementary, a junior high and a high school version of it. And uh, the different sessions for session A and session B are different. Um, I think the past couple of years, the teachers for the elementary and the junior high have been the same. The sessions have been a little bit different. So there's just different themes. Um, for example, the uh, junior high one right now is working on like nature writing. So they're also at ASU um, from nine to noon every single day for two weeks. Um, parents just register online. We try and spread word of mouth and, you know, there's really not any formalized um, like recruitment or anything like that. We just, whoever is going to be teaching and people try and send things out. We send things out by like through ASU. People find us, they sign their kids up and then we teach them something. Um, so you have, you have eight in your um I have nine. Have One nine. of them was not here today, which is why we only have eight in there. Okay. Um we'll go. Yep. Okay. so we have nine students in there. Um the elementary and the junior high have a little bit more, but I also think again, most of what they're doing, there's not necessarily a like a specific or set outcome of you know, we're hoping the kid or the students will be able to walk away with something in hand. Um, this is really the only session that has anything like that and is going to be a little bit more structured um, academically like that, kind of like a regular, like, I don't know, just unit essay. Um, so, yeah. So, so, uh, so, yeah, go uh, ahead. Would you mind um, sort of uh, describing for us, and maybe share your screen to do it, describing for us the way you describe writing partners? It's not the only thing you're using, obviously, and it's not the only goal you have. But 
it is it is a part of big part of what you're doing i think is that yeah fair to say? yeah okay uh oh, so and, and as you're getting your screen ready i uh, i will say this that the writing partners so one of the things we're going to do tonight is kind of look at what the students are doing remember it's like you can only get so much done in eight days right um and we're um anyway but Jess Early and Chris Sloan and I and anybody who was showing up at TTT last summer built templates. Um, sorry, my power, I need to plug it. Built templates and then Chris Sloan kind of um, prototyped them on Youth Voices and then we kind of, then we imported them into Writing Partners. So you're going to give us and your students have some feedback on how they work and what they're working and we can look at some of that as well feel free if you'd like to click on anything there the writing partners um banner there will take you to the group that kylie is going to show you i hope in just a second and um and if as you know please interrupt and make your questions known here as we go how, how are you doing with sharing <laughs> Um, are you wanting like me to share like the lesson plans that I've been going over or like just the writing oh. partners and like how I've been walking them through the site? Yeah, do that. The okay. second part. All right. I mean, um, we can get the lesson plans if you want, but yeah. Present. And Kylie had, um, did a great job of getting IRB approval. And so you and Dr. Early are going to be able to write about this experience afterwards, we hope. So yes, that was uh, that was something that was really important to us for anybody who's ever been through IRB process. I feel for you because that was not a fun time. Um, but once we got like once we got it through, then it was actually really easy. It was the IRB people were really nice. It was other people that we had to try to do some things with that held us up a little bit. But anyway, it's fine. Um, but yeah, we're hoping to be able to take some of this and write about it and um you know again as a phd student i'm hoping to maybe turn this into like a comp paper or something to publish we'll see what we end up doing with it um mm -hmm. but really i mean are any i don't know if is this familiar to anybody in here is this all kind of <coughs> yeah kind of tell us what you tell your tell your told your students about it i think some are familiar, some are not. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, and I, I... And I'll fill in if I need to, or if yeah. anybody has questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, I mean, the second day of the camp, we I gave them two different surveys. There was one on a just a writing self-efficacy survey. So asking things like, you, uh, do I see myself as a writer? I feel like I'm a part of a community of writers. Um, you know, I feel confident in my writing and things like that. I thought that was kind of an important like baseline to be able to sort of judge some of the AI data off of to know whether or not, again, like do, are, is this a group of people who enjoy writing, who see themselves as writers, um, would identify as that kind of thing. Um, so we did that. And I think that was just 15 questions and it was pretty simple, straightforward questions. Um, and then they had a second survey and I did this, I did the surveys before I did any sort of, um, like instruction on AI. And the second survey is a 40 question survey that I created um, about their attitudes in AI. So one of the, I guess I'm interested in qualitative data and studying, um, again, just that like attitudes and like more like the narrative structure of how we come to like view ourselves as teachers or students and writers and things like that. Um, so a lot of those questions were sort of built to say like, I feel confident using AI, or I wish I had more knowledge about using AI, or, you know, I've used this in my writing. And some of the questions were tailored specifically to ChatGPT, and some of them were more tailored to writing partners. So that way, again, I could get a really good baseline of where they were at, how they felt about using AI and generative AI, like writing partners or ChatGPT in their writing. Um, and then they're I, going to be- I, those I just want, I just- I just want to joke that when I showed up on screen the ne the next day and said, how many, hand to fist, how many people are confident or, or, or I mean, that was a little less scientific than you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but, 
anyway. but I mean, no, like that's, I'm, I'm also doing that again. A lot of the, like we had really long discussions and I'm sure all of you know, as teachers that, um, the lesson plan that I had today, we got through like a quarter of it, um, because most of what we were doing, um, or like the conversations that we were having about AI ended up taking up most of the day. And I was like, this is actually really good and really cool to get this feedback from you guys. So I would much rather like spend the time doing this and we can, we have a little bit of wiggle room to push some of the other things. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I, I have some really specific like qualitative data and surveys, but just a lot of really good observational data too. And it's, it's fascinating seeing what they like and what they don't like. Um, but anyway, I gave them the surveys again before I did any sort of instruction. And then the instruction about like what AI is, how a generative AI works, things like, you know, the LLMs and the APIs and stuff like that. So that way they could kind of gain a baseline. I think I'm really trying to get them to see that like, Using AI doesn't necessarily have to feel like icky or gross, and it doesn't have to feel like cheating or plagiarizing. And so I think that was uh, the main thing that I, I think really you have tried. a title for your article. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> yeah, it's not icky. Um, and I think that was really what I tried to play when I started introducing writing partners to them, because most of them were familiar with chat GPT. Only like one or two had actually like said that they used it in their writing. Most of them said, yeah, I've used it at some point, but I'm, I don't know. I think there's a really big gray area and I'm not sure where that line is. Um, so then I started getting into writing partners and I use this phrase a lot in my classroom as the name entails, it is a writing partner or a partner that's going to help you write. Um, you know, you think like when I'm teaching like text structure, I'm like, it's the structure of the text, just like it says, you know. Um, so I kind of started with that. Just it's different themed writing partners. It's AI. It's similar. Like it was built off of, you know, a similar structure and a similar like language model that ChatGPT was. But it's going to be a lot more tailored and specific to what we are going to be doing in this classroom. And specifically, again, going through, um, if you scroll down to the writing partners available to you in this group, which by the way, Paul, yeah. super duper helpful to categorize them like this. Yeah, I loved I, it. And I'll, I'll say very, very quickly that this is sort of like where we are in this process. It's, we, it, we, we will continue to iterate, but we're trying to make each of the groups fit into these four categories, but go ahead. Yeah, um, so that was really, really good. Um, you found it helpful because <laughs> they didn't interrupt you. It was like, okay, so for example, today, one of the things that I gave them, um, and especially because I'm still new to writing partners and just AI in general, and they are, and like Paul said, I'm. there's only so much when the end goal of this is you have a finalized, edited, and revised college admissions essay that you should feel confident sending off to a college at the end of the session. Like that needed to be the focus um, AI had to be kind of a secondary thing. Um, so I feel like, and I keep telling like, I could, I could spend weeks using writing partners or using these things in there. So I don't feel like, I don't know, I guess it was easy or it was nice to have this sort of structure because it, I just didn't have the time I wish I could have had in something like this to really dig deep and give them something really, really specific to do. I've sort of let them play around with it a lot and said, here's maybe some guidelines or here's some suggestions. So for example, today we're, they have a, they have a rough draft and we're getting into peer editing and revising. So I told them before we do peer editing and revising, I want you to go in and you're going to upload the draft into writing partners and you have to use a minimum of three writing partners. Mm -hmm. My only ask is it had like you have to use three you can use more than that but we're sort of past the brainstorming so i don't want you to use the getting started simulator but i want you to pick one writing partner from composing one from revising and then pick the editing one because that's the only one that's in there and see what it gives you pick any of them ask it a question read read about them try and see you know do you feel like you still need help with description do you feel like you like you know like how it has the um like the descriptions of them all. So like if you click on one of them, for example, um, I think a lot, like you, you might know that. already, but yeah, if you click
click us and you want to ask AI a question from the drop down menu, you have all of these same options that you had on the first homepage. Um, so I told them go through and pick one from again, reflection, revision, and then just the editing one, but figure out what you need and where are you at in this essay. And especially because college admissions essays are very different depending on what college you're going to be applying to do some of them, some of them that they're applying to have a list of questions that they have to respond to. Some of them just say, write a personal essay to get us to know you better. Um, and that can be a really difficult thing for the students to try and, you know, just brainstorm and come up with absolutely nothing. So I left it open-ended on purpose because I wanted them to be able to click on one of these and look over here at the persona, the purpose, the process, and the product and see. We are is not this saying that, by the way. Um Say that again? Oh, did you go to a different tab um, on your oh, browser? That's right. Share this tab instead. Okay. Got to remember that. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Okay. Kind of start over. Like they could, again, press a number or press this Ask AI, and then they would pick from one of these things. So again, if they still felt like I need a little bit of help, you know, adding description into mine, then they would click this. And then I told them, really make sure that you go through this persona and this purpose, especially to try and figure out, does this match what you're hoping to get out of it? And I think that was kind of step number one that I really tried to make sure to yeah. iterate to them that you need to first figure out what it is you want it to do and what you want out of it, and then find something that matches that. Because if you ask something that does not match that, then you're not gonna get what you want. And then you're gonna think that it's not helpful and that's not helpful for anybody. So spend time going through this on your own. And I gave them 15 minutes and at the end of the 15 minutes said, show me with your hands or your fingers, how many more minutes do you need? And almost all of them raised their hand, like 10 more minutes, please. And so that's Kylie also why it went a lot longer. Yeah. I was like- Ky Ky Kylie, I, let's, let's take a break and hear other people's questions and thoughts yeah. and feedback. Yeah. Kylie, I, just picking up on just what you said, I'm just going to jump in. Um, mm -hmm. This business of getting people to um, consider the uh, of the word I keep using for this is an essential question. Like, what what's the essential essential question behind each thinking partner, and does that correspond to what you think you need? Did you find that students were able, in their own terms, to sort of come up with that and say, you know, that one isn't right, but this one is because was that something they were able to explain, or did they just sort of intuitively say, you know, I want to do the the tutoring, I need to get the say back. Um, did they explain their what their encounter with those four P's was? Um, maybe, maybe not quite as, sorry, I'm, okay, sorry. I kind of like lagged for a second. Um, yes and no. I mean, it mm -hmm. wasn't like super duper sad, I guess. But yeah, when I asked them at the end, like just use this, they talked in gr small groups and then we just had a whole class discussion. And I think in some of their feedback, they were able to say like, yeah, like I didn't have a conclusion. And so mm. I went to the conclusion tutor. And so I chose that. Um, sure. I think I probably sure. got that a little bit more for like these reflective or like the peer tutor review ones here. Um, uh -huh. They mention some of these, not quite by name. I know that they use them, obviously, but I feel like I got that feedback a little bit more from one of these four because they were really, they were very sure of like, this is what I'm missing or this is what I need. And so that's what I'm going mm -hmm. to go ahead and use. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other questions, pushback, thoughts? Welcome, Harry, break. <laughs> okay. Harry, introduce yourself briefly before, and you can, yeah. Um, Kevin, I'm a librarian over at uh, Woodbridge High School in Delaware, part of the Delaware Association of School Libraries, and uh, playing catch up probably after many months, just very busy on my end, but this wasn't good. We have a, a gentleman that's going for his doctorate. It's our English teacher at school, and he's redoing a whole uh, literacy framework for the whole district, writing, reading, comprehension. And I saw this topic and I'm like, yeah, pop in and see what's going on. So, Welcome. Nice to have you here. Thanks. Other people, thoughts, questions, um, like what's that so what thing or why do you have four things? You know, <laughs> any any thoughts or questions you might have? 
I, I really like the categorization. I, th I think that would definitely um, help narrow down and give a bit of context to which writing partner that people select. So I think that is a really, um, a really simple and effective step. I was thinking a similar thing and then I was, my brain went to like how you might format that box, some like UI kind of stuff to kind of encourage that. So not, not critically important, but if okay. I was doing this without an aide like Kylie encouraging me to do that, would I have stopped to read? What would you, well, what would you, what's your first instinct, uh, Christine? Well, a little bit know. like I want to like have it come up underneath the um, that it's it's more linear and not on the side. Uh -huh. um, sure. But then it needs to sort of go away after you've gotten the hang of it. <laughs> so right. I was just yeah. playing with like how you could like hide, open and hide it or something eventually. Hmm. Um, yeah, I've been, been, I've been I don't know if you I've guys can see when you're in this view, you can, I'm pointing like you can see my screen, um, but like it has it kind of over here at the right when you hover over it in this view, but you are right. It does like, unless you know to look for it, um, I would agree. I might not be paying super close attention to this part. Yeah. It looks sort of like ancillary content, but I appreciate the way that you're instructing to start there. Yeah. Um, one piece of feedback, Paul, if anybody else has any questions, jump in. But one piece of feedback that a student did have on this um, particular part was that um, they felt like figuring out how to prompt it was a little bit difficult to try and do. And so because of that, because they felt like they didn't have the prompting skills, then they felt like they either had to try a little bit harder or multiple times to get what they wanted, or they had to, um, I get just that, or they, or they didn't get what, it, what they wanted out of it. And then again, their reflection of how well this tool worked, I think probably suffered because of that. Um, so one suggestion that a student has is how it has this persona and purpose. She said, I wish that there were maybe like an example or two of a sample <clears throat> prompts that I can give it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I've noticed makes a world of difference when I use AI with my students is people who know how to prompt it get way better results out of it as opposed to those who don't know how to prompt it or are not willing to go through that process of prompting it or of learning how to successfully do that. Um, so yeah, especially for students or in a you know, situation like this, I have two weeks. I can't spend an entire day telling this is how to successfully prompt an AI. That might be something that could be beneficial. I know it could limit, um, but that was an ask of one of the students. Could the persona have a portfolio or a sort of a digital dossier of successful prompts that it has addressed in the past? Hmm. Or a list, yeah. Yes, yeah, building its own CV. So, even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the dossier idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got a kid into Yale. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Kylie, if you, if you scroll down all the way on the right, um, there's a link at the bottom, uh, uh, inside the box. Yep. The link, the link at the bottom, I, I, I don't know if you're students use this or not but if you're interested because i did yeah. not know this existed okay so if you're interested to see the whole prompt you click that link and you're ah. going to go, gonna go to a different tab which you'll need to show us oh. okay share this tab <laughs> so you can see the whole the whole um what the whole prompt here again i mean so and then if you go all the way to the bottom so this might be a place to put that um what you were mm -hmm. suggesting there, Paul, because um, it's it's always hard to know how much to put up front and how much not. But you'll see at the bottom, you get to see who made this originally and where it's shared and all, all as well. And then there's a button at the top that allows you to quickly duplicate and change it, right? So, mm -hmm. so there's all that, that we're sort of playing with here. Yeah, go ahead. Paul, maybe it's just a matter of 
that link that's currently down the bottom underneath all of those options of just flipping mm -hmm. that to the top so that 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 was yeah. that would be above and then that'd be easier for people to um to to see because it would be the, at the top and then then flow through mm -hmm. yeah I agree. I think they, the, I told them to really pay attention to the purpose. Um, I guess in my teaching and probably because I've taught them that they would echo that as well. I think the purpose and the persona are probably the two most important things that I really told them to focus on. Um, so yeah, I guess if you were thinking about adding like the prompt portion in there, then maybe persona purpose and prompt would probably be, or could be like the top three. Um, and still leave it like this and leave like the detailed prompt, but maybe the prompt in the text box itself that pops up has just a quick one or two and then like click here for more or something like that. And, so, and your students are not yet making writing partners, right? No, there's we're, a, there's so many yeah, days. Don't, don't apologize. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> just identifying that. So I'm just saying, people, once you start making them, you get more interested in, oh, what was this prompt, right? Um, but, but yeah. So I think this is probably too much detail for your students, myself, but who knows? Yeah. 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 This would probably, like, I'm, I would tell them that it existed if I knew about this today. And I'll probably <laughs> tell them tomorrow when they get in it, just like, if you want to continue to look at it, then you can. And then here's where you click and there's more information. But I think, especially based off of some of the feedback that I got today between this and chat GPT, I think a lot of them are like, they want to go in, they want to be able to get what they want out of it. And then they want to be able to go out. Um, Say more about the comparison. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I got like one student, I guess I'll, I'll start with this. Eight out of eight of the students said that they would continue to use writing partners in the future. They said, I like it. It gave me good stuff. Um, the ones who were a little bit more like anti chat GPT were definitely more pro writing partners. Um, and I would say, again, those were the ones who were concerned about the ethical implications of using something like chat GPT that really just generates content for you and using that content. Um, I had a student who compared, like, sort of compared and contrasted the, um, like, the conclusion tutor. Um, so in writing partners, she asked it, can you help give me, like, can you help me with my conclusion? And again, she didn't have a conclusion. Um, and it gave her some things to talk about. And she said, I liked them. They felt a little bit generic, but it was helpful. But also, I don't really feel like I'm having a problem like creating content necessarily. I feel like I'm have or like I'm I'm having a problem like getting started and the ideas aren't necessarily helpful in like the getting started part. Um so I wish it would maybe create content a little bit more for me versus mm -hmm. when she used Chat GPT and asked it, "Hey, can you write me a conclusion?" She said I read it and I loved the conclusion it wrote for me. But now I'm afraid that I'm going to use that and I'm going to be caught cheating and plagiarizing. And I was like, well, you don't like you can you can use that and you can like you can maybe use a like, structure or an idea. And she was like, I don't want to use it at all. Like, I'm I'm mad that I even asked it because what it gave me was so good. And now I don't even want to use any of those ideas because I don't want to cheat. So that kind of led to sort of a different conversation. It was like, we can talk about we can talk about ethics and AI all day long. And unfortunately we just don't have the time right now. Um, but again, so for students who were like, who felt like um, the ethical concerns of using AI was sort of at the forefront of uh, their mind when using these tools, those are the students who said like 12 out of 10, I would rather use writing partners than chat GPT. Um, but then I feel like most of my students, it's actually maybe half of them, um, they like AI and they said, I found writing partners to be beneficial. I found ChatGPT to also be beneficial. There were things about both of them that I liked and I didn't like, but there's not really a like, there's not a one over the other. They said, I feel like these are two very different products that to do, do two very different things. 
and they might both be AI, but I can't really compare apples to oranges here. And so I would use them but for they, different. But they see the difference, right? That's yes, the that, yes, that's what I mean. That Like that, I'm sort of summarizing for them, but that was essentially the outcome that apples, oranges, I like them both and I would definitely use them both. Um, seven out of eight of them would use ChatGPT. The one who had it right her conclusion, I think was a little bit freaked out. <laughs> So she will not be using ChatGPT anymore if she can avoid it. But they all collectively and unanimously said, I would use writing partners. So shall we look at more at what they've come up with and what it looks like on here? Does sure. that make sense? Or anybody else have another suggestion? Um, and each of us, so there are eight of us here, sort of, but in there are eight on the table. Oh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We could each look at one and then report back, or we could look at it together. What do you want to do? Everyone says do it together when I ask that. But, let's, yeah. let's, go in, let's go in together. I'm, I'm kind of freaked out. Like okay. the, the, first time, the first time somebody hit square root on a value on a calculator was probably freaked out. You know. <laughs> what's, Say what's more, happening? Paul. What are you freaked out by? Or what do you, what's your questions? Well, I guess my question is, I think uh, what Kylie is describing is the students are looking at the difference between platform and persona. And mm -hmm. when I don't know what in the platform is providing me with a response, I, I guess as a poet, I think about stanzas and I think about little room. <clears throat> so let's go look at that conclusion and like, why do you like that so much? What's happening there? What are the writer moves? We don't even have to go back into the platform now to answer that question. What, what's happening in that little space, that para-ratio uh, that ChatGPT has created? If you can name that, then you could go and emulate that. We just call that parallel text, right? So that, I, I don't, if, if students don't know those kind of terms and those approaches, they may not know that they can write parallel to a mentor text. And it's... Nope. it's um, Paul, before, I, I'm, I can't help but interrupt you. What you just said, I guess it's maybe, what, 20 seconds of speech? Maybe that's uh, 100 words you just said? Like... Uh, Paul Allison, listening to Paul ha Hankins just describe what he just described. Mm -hmm. Could we imagine that the writing partners would sound like Paul Hankins? I mean, screen write that into the prompt so that it's a discursive, nudging response. And it also, I'm, I'm just trying to respond to Kylie's comment about the student who was kind of astounded and a little bit intimidated by seeing a fully written uh conclusion. I mean, Paul Hankins, what you just described was kind of an ideal writing coach sitting by my side asking me a question about my desire to work something out. Mm -hmm. Fully informed, really thorough, lots of prompts, including examples. It was a really, you know, you just do that natively. Any good teacher does that on his or her own terms. And if these bots can sound the way you just did, I'm, it would be very, very interesting. I'm always curious about the extent to which the bot can actually be made to reflect some of those moves that you just did, for example, in that response. Paul Allison, have you had any experience trying to screenwrite at that level, so to speak? Well, sure. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that, and Kylie, can you find the, the young woman who used the conclusion one? I'm thinking, and you could just do it from inside here. You don't have to go out to the table. I, I think, yeah. Once you click on yeah, I, I think we'll be okay. There we go. Is that the conclusion one? Yes. No? Yeah. Um, is there a conclusion there or not? Let me see. Keep going down. Hey, this was hers. So you, um, one of the things you need, do you see at the top it says um, full? You need to click the full box so they all open up. Up oh, there, red red comments, and then there's full, full, yeah. Okay. Cool. So by the way, it was giving her Spanish, right? <laughs> yeah. And I went in, and I went in and asked it to translate that for her. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, yeah, that was what just one of the students was like. I told it in like the in the box. Yeah, like when I ask AI under this like ad relevant detail. She said she would just ask it the question and she just put English, please. And it translated it into English for it. I was like, that is a very quick and smart workaround from you. And I'm very proud of her for thinking of that because I don't think I would have. 
Right. And I can't quite see this box. Maybe we'll make it bigger. It, does she use conclusion on this? On this it's version? not yeah. looking like it. She said she did. Oh, fair enough. So what did she use here, though? Um, oh, she used right, the getting see. started. Uh huh. She did use getting started. Say back, which she probably didn't I really did use. If she yeah. didn't know to. Yeah. And then she used the spell and grammar and paragraph. Yeah. Um, that was oh. something that another student also said that he really, really liked this one. Um, he was like, I, I asked it to do it for me and it just, it did it. Um, which was really nice. Oh, another piece of feedback that they said kind of in this, um, that just reminded me like how at the bottom here, it says, um, like sentences original, um, mm -hmm. They said that they liked how it referenced their own essays in their responses. And that was nice. It had a very nice personal touch and made them feel a little, again, like a little better about using this. Um, so that was a positive. But they wish that this could have been highlighted in their actual essay. Oh, they were like, I see this, nice. but I have to now find in my essay where that is all right <laughs> it's on the list yeah. I, we're not going to get there tomorrow but yeah it's, it's like that sounds like but something but a little more say, than just the code but just to say what 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 we designed this one to do is look at words look at sentences and then look at paragraphs right and to make make them correct quote unquote standard english mm -hmm. but then to make a list of the all the words that were misspelled, if you scroll up a little bit, and then make it, and then tell us, tell us why you changed the grammar the way you, in the sentences, and then explain why you broke up the paragraphs you did. So it kind of gives reason, right? And you're saying they pay attention to that. I was just worried that they would just blow by it, but you're saying, but they would like it to, yeah, fair enough. Mostly, I just kind of realized I was in the wrong students. I was like, I'm sure I'm in the right students. Nope, it was Layla. Layla's the one who made that comment. Oh, good. So she only has one comment. That was also something that I realized kind of at the end. They were using these, and then once one student was like, I don't know how to save any of these, and she read the feedback. And another student was like, you have to click the, like, the post button. And she was like, oh, <laughs> got it. Like none of the work that she she did it, but I don't think she actually knew to save any of it or press that finalized button until the end. One of the drawbacks of me kind of letting them just play for a little while. I didn't catch it until the end, but oh, oh well. Kylie, that's the, the Kylie. Your comment about highlighting the um, original text in the in the. Uh... Hi highlighting the comment in the original text. I mean, that's just a visual cue for scanning texts. And um, that would be really, really useful because it would just be a way that you sort of intuitively navigate your drafts, right? Mm -hmm. You would be able to see. So when you went from one, if the format of feedback started to borrow that highlighting, it would be a way that you could scan parallel texts really nicely as, uh, and it would all happen pretty seamlessly we're used to that right we just look for those things when we do um the review stuff that's yeah. a good that's a really helpful comment about just moving through the ui yeah Kylie, is there any any other that you want to show or <clears throat> just pick one um to be honest i have not even gone through no these I, yet I, I appreciate i know what it's like be working all summer i mean the two no, mostly yeah i get like yeah. Let's see. Kenji was one who he really liked it. He, I've like, I still haven't turned off the notifications yet for like when they upload things. I've gotten like 12 emails saying Kenji created a new thing. So he's using this. He was using this at like 10 o'clock at night last night. When I got an email because I get the emails like instantaneously when they create a document and like, I, you know, I get invited to the document. Um, so Kenji's been using this a lot which has been really cool um what's, what's he doing the first one there let's see um oh would the okay so he just asked would this he be used the conclusion, conclusion? Uh -huh. i like that okay this so by this the way script really... is it, 
let's slow down a little bit and just maybe read through the conclusion tutor because i i want to say that when when david asked about scripting what we did was we scripted from um jess early's book about how she teaches the conclusion right so that's mm -hmm. what that's that was the first place we did but yeah right do you mind do you mind reading that for us kylie or somebody else the his conclusion or the no yeah conclusion tutor the conclusion tutor just so we get a sense of what it does yeah compared to actually writing the conclusion for you yeah so kenji just asked would this be an effective conclusion for the whole story so he already has his conclusion he's not asking it to generate just is this effective yes or no and and did he pick the last paragraph to do that so um scroll up a little bit paragraph yes. six yep he did indeed okay so he picked the last paragraph then asked that question of the conclusion tutor Yep. And it says, you have done a commendable job in conveying your feelings of hopefulness and compassion in your conclusion. I appreciate how you highlight the peacefulness of Hiroshima and the gratitude of the officials, which gives a personal touch to your narrative. For example, you wrote, I felt a sense of hopefulness and compassion towards the people who strive for peace in the world, which effectively communicates your emotional journey. However, you could improve by providing a clear connection between your experience and the broader implications of your story. For instance, delve deeper into how this experience has shaped your beliefs and what attributes you bring to a college or university. Um, that alone is amazing. Um, I do know that one of the things that they said is that it, they liked how it took things that it said from theirs, but they felt like it was a little bit generic so i guess like in that first sentence you've conveyed your hopefulness and compassion um i mean he says that directly in the sentence you know what i mean um so i <laughs> yeah. think maybe that's maybe that's why they said it felt a little like i gave it the words and it just sort of like respit out some of those same words to me um mm -hmm. but i mean yeah that is a I don't know. Like that's one of the things that we really, really honed in on is that you really need to, you need to focus on like showing and not just telling and really, really bridging that connection and the so what of like why would this why would this matter? So I wonder so, how Kelly, Kelly, I, I just want I just want to put a pin in in what you just did there and mm -hmm. and I think we want to do and we want to always ask the teacher is the AI helping you reach your goals for the students and in this case you're saying that. The thing it just did there is what I want it to do. Is that yes. fair? Okay. Yes, that is absolutely. I would say, like I told them, they're. And you also said it's it's generic and all over the place, but. But I mean, <laughs> so just that yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, so, mostly just that it said, yeah, you conveyed this and that. Well, yeah. He, did he convey it because he said that? I don't know. Um, that's fair. But I agree. That is definitely something without actually reading his essay. That's definitely something that I told him is very important is like, you need to make those connections really clear and explain why that story is going to help a college admissions officer, like see that you're going to be successful on their campus. Um, so then it says, yeah, I, I, I think it's really interesting the like that they pick up on that point about it's sort of, it almost, it sounds like an AI did this. <laughs> which is sort of what they're saying. Like, it sounds like a person didn't do this. Um, and I, I wonder whether they might actually be a bit more freaked out if, if it did sound incredibly sort of natural or... <laughs> so I, I wonder if it actually might even sort of subconsciously just help go, remember, this is a tool that you are using for advice. So take on board. You can choose to take on board the feedback or not, but, but you are still asking a tool for advice. Mm -hmm. yeah another so he he actually talked or... he talked he did talk back to it as well yeah i was gonna say that is something that um he said thanks <laughs> one of yeah. one of the other students said that they liked they liked both of them but she said this is one of the things about chat gpt that i like about chat gpt is that I'm having a conversation. She said, I don't really view this as like, I'm not having a conversation with a bot, but I'm having a conversation. And I like that conversational and that sort of like personal touch to it. Um, she said, I wish that, you know, I could maybe do that with writing partners a little bit more. She said, I feel like it sort of gives me something. And if I want to, I want to edit that or I want to continue on in that, then I need to either ask it a brand new question 
edit yeah. the one that it already gave me and then that's going to get rid of the stuff that it kind of gave me or I'm going to have to like go in and edit it like edit the document and then ask it again she said there's just kind of like there's sort of a lot of steps to get it to have that same sort of like conversational piece um as opposed to chat gpt you know it's just it's just all in the same thing um so I don't know if that's, I don't know, something you guys are interested in trying to do or how easy that would be. But I feel like if there was an ability to kind of go back and forth with it a little bit more, that might, I don't know, that might be something that some of them said that mm -hmm. could be beneficial and sort of along that same line, I'm going to tag a second thing on there. Um, almost unanimously, they all said, although they liked that writing partner's didn't just create content for them because they couldn't like chat GPT would just create right and it wouldn't give them suggestions like this um they wish that writing partners could sort of do both of those things so where it says you know to strengthen your conclusion you might consider expanding upon the broader implications of your essay topic they said it gave me that idea but I wish it would have provided an example and said for example blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't, have, they said it doesn't have to be the entire thing, but if they could say, you know, you need to add more detail and try, you know, like the, um, the description tutor, you know, where it says, you know, like add, you know, add a sensory thing here. Um, give me an example of what a sentence could look like using my essay and how could I actually add those details in there? It's really helpful. I, I do want to say, though, that last week, Aditya <laughs> was arguing the opposite. He was saying it should never give an example, because when it gives an example, the the writer who doesn't care about the assignment and so forth is just going to copy and paste it. But, uh, you know. Yeah, Paul, I, Paul, I, I got a question. Yeah. But we can, you know. Go ahead. Sure. Picking up on what Kylie's saying in terms of... Um, and it also gets back to the business of highlighting comments and so forth. But um, if if writing partners were, and I've tried to do this in other app and other apps early on when I first got into this, which was if the bot could review the essay at hand, and in lieu of just saying it would be great if you did X, sort of come up with a parallel kind of structure, which it can do very easily. It could write a story not about Hiroshima, but about something else. And then sort of invent sample rhetorics or word choice or parallel construction or just, just sort of provide sort of stylistically relevant examples. So without, you're suggesting, so, uh huh, without giving the actual example yeah. of that content. Yeah. So you'd actually see That's a great prose. Idea. Yeah, yeah, you'd you'd yeah. see it generating prose, but it would not be trying to, it wouldn't be a cotton paste move, but it would be very much about what a writing style could sound like. Kyla, um, how do you feel about that? Does that make I sense? think that would be great. And I think that would also go back to the previous point of, again, yeah, like that parallel thing. And that was actually sort of the conversation that we had with that student who said, I don't want to use this conclusion at all. And I asked her just, you know, we're just everybody. There's no right or wrong answer here. But how many of you have ever struggled writing? And then you read a conclusion of somebody else's essay. And then you sort of structure yours off of that. Right. Have you ever felt like that was cheating? And most of them, no, then, well, why is this then? And I was like, there's no right or wrong answer. And honestly, like, we're probably not going to talk about that because there's just a lot, there's a lot that goes in behind that question. It's a loaded one. But if you think about it that way and you, again, yeah, use that as a structure to try and generate your own content and ideas now, then is that cheating and plagiarizing? Well, I guess only you can answer that question. But in my mind, no. So I agree if one of the, I think one of the cool things in the integrity of writing partners is that it does not just give you something that you can copy and paste like chat GPT. And I think one of the biggest concerns yeah. of students and teachers right now is what are the ethical implications of this and is using this cheating or plagiarizing. And so if you yeah. can, give it something that they want where yes, like give me a lead, give me a start and give me a specific example without generating something that I can copy and paste. I think that would be a really, really great compromise of maintaining the integrity of writing partners, but sort of giving the people what they want and not giving the people like your conversation last week, what they don't want, you know? 
Well, I, I think Paul Hankins very eloquently sort of summed that up earlier when, um, Paul, when you were speaking um, about that parallels understanding a piece of writing and then looking for what are the key features or elements and then applying that to your writing. So I, I think you you really hit on that, which is sort of what we're, we're talking about at the moment. Yep. Is there a mentor text analysis tool or a thinking partner already? Hmm. I think that's a really interesting. How would that work? Say, say more. Well, just, um, I mean, Paul might have more to say. I was just thinking about like reading Troy's book um, about um, college composition. You know, they just go through a bunch of sort of texts that you find in the professional world and talk through the structure of those texts and have kids analyze the structure and kind of map out like how the different components are working together and then use that map to support their work. But Paul, you probably have more eloquent ways of thinking about this. No, that, that's you mean, Paul Hankins or yes. Yeah, Paul Hankins, yeah. 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 I was, you know, I was really kind of thinking about it in the improv world. Um, when we talk about the power of the phrase, it's like a two word phrase, yes and, you know, yeah. and a, a way of saying that is the riff, right? So I'm, I'm riffing, I'm improving with the writing partner. So I'm not necessarily taking anything that I'm also not giving if I understand those two things, the riff and the power of yes and, you know, uh, if, if, if I'm just saying yes, if I'm just saying yes to the platform, then the platform is doing the work and, and I'm not, a, I'm not part of it. Right. So um, and I, I like Christina's idea about um, analyzing mentor text. And I know this would be like a moonshot, but if you could have a conversation with that, if you, have, if you have a conversation with, OK, we like this introductory paragraph because it's well, what, what's the value of a quote in an introductory paragraph? What is the value of an anecdote? Who best uses anecdotes in the presentation of an idea? You know, um, these, these these last two weeks, the two hours that I've spent coming back uh to this space have been so valuable to me that this is uh this has really been good stuff i appreciate the compliments but i'm like um and i'm i'm not i'm i'm eating here i'm like i'm i'm eating from a, a short handled spoon i mean it's just like there is so much here it's, it's really really good stuff so i so does anybody have five more minutes do we try to do one more thing <laughs> sorry Okay. Nobody said no, but if you need to leave, I get it. Kylie, can you stop sharing one second? I want to show you actually. Yep. Um, one thing we we talked about early on. Well, I'm not sharing properly. Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So can you talk about what we were thinking about with the college admissions? And this comes out of Jess's book directly. She, she kind of demystifying who the college admissions person is. But we've run out of time for that, probably. But what were, you, what were you hoping to do with that? With using writing partners? Yeah. Specifically? Um, hmm, it's a good question. Again, I think for, like, first and foremost, um, I'm, I'm team AI. And I really want to, uh, I guess you said, like, demystify this idea of, you know, what a college admissions essay is. Um, I want my students and I want any and all students to know that like you are a writer and that you write for different genres or for different reasons and different purposes. And I think we're so stuck on, or these, these students are so stuck on the idea that like I only write essays and I only write argumentative essays or whatever it is for my English class. My teacher grades it and that's it. And I want to sort of open and expand their worldview to not just, or to writing, but in the process of that, um, I don't know, just like different tools and strategies and things that we can use in that process. And so I guess the one that I've sort of latched onto now is just using AI. Um, before it was multimodalities in writing and I was really interested in that. Um, and I guess I've sort of, ex again, like I kind of honed in on that and now I'm sort of expanding and realizing that that can be under a branch of, you know, like David said, like, digital tech and digital literacies and how these things can be used in writing. And so um, I think that was ultimately kind of why writing partners and uh, 
don't know, just getting them interested in AI and seeing how they can use it. I, I should probably just leave this here, but I'm going to show this to you anyway. I'm going to <laughs> push it, push it, push it forward. Um, one of the things, um, w there was an article, and I put this up with your account, Kylie. It's, it's up mm -hmm. there. Um, you can show this to them later. Um, this is, I'm actually showing you this. We haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. So it's, it's an article that was just published this week in Forbes, and um, I think it was, yeah. Um, and it's called How Not to Write Your College Essay, right? So it goes through these different steps. Don't be a downer, right? Don't be, a, but he's quoting from admissions officers, right? As as he does this. Decent, decent read, I think, maybe for your students. You can decide that or not. Um, sorry, I'll get there. Um, so what I did is I took this article and this is, this is part of what, what's going on here, part of what you were all talking about. Um, and now I just want to get to the group. And it was, uh, which student was it? He didn't have much up yet. Oh, Advith. Advith. Advith, thank you. So Advith hadn't put much, hadn't used much yet. So here's what I want to show you. So I, I took, I took a, I opened AI, I selected the writing partner, um, the, and this is, you know, not the first thing you would do or even the fifth thing you would do, but at, at some point, um, we, we have one called an Imagine Audience Simulator, right? So you can choose the Imagine Simulator. You can think about your question like, hey, give me feedback on my writing. Um, and then, but then what I did was in this extra box here, right? I just copied the entire Forbes article here. Actually, sorry, let me go back to that. In the question, I say, hey, be the author of the article that I'm, I'm giving you here and give me feedback on my writing, right? It's a pretty cool move, I think, in terms of some of this. So, so what it ends up doing is, oh, here's my prompt. B, I got the author's name, the author of the article I'm, I'm adding here, and give me feedback on my rough draft. So it says, hello, this is who I am. And by the way, Paul Hankins, <laughs> um, the, um, the one of the, inside the prompt, if you look at it, it, it says be an improv actor and just be the person we tell you to be. And it, it acts like that actor, right? But you can see, you can see, um, all right, it uses similar categories that are in the article. So let's assume he's read, the, the student has read the article already. What's going to happen here is, um, let's just read the first one. It's crucial that you stay true to your own voice and experiences. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> while your essay is heartfelt, at times it feels like you're trying to fit a mold of what you think the admissions officers want to hear. For example, phrases like tennis has proven to be a major part of my life and my character, and it has prepared me to strive to become a better version of myself sounds somewhat generic and could be more specific to your unique, unique journal journey. Um, it continues to use, again, it uses the framework of that article to give the student critique and feedback on on his article, right? Useful or not? I don't know. This is I what, like that. This is we're going to be doing some. Uh, I'm sorry, we're just going to be we're going to be finishing this up, and they're going we're going to be doing some conferences with them tomorrow. So we'll have more data and information for next week if you feel like kind of continuing this at all, or just you we and can. I all talking. Yeah. But anyway, um, well, we hope that's something that I can too, definitely have them good. do tomorrow. Well. I'm doing conferences with some of them, then I'll have them kind of do some editing and take a look at that too. So you can kind of keep an eye on when we're actually in session and see if anybody's using it or what they get from it. Well, did you get what I did there? I copied the article, pasted it in that third box. Yeah. 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 And I'll add it into our Google Classroom. So that'll be, yeah, super easy for them. Oh, good. Cool. Thoughts, questions? I know I, I like pushing things a little too far here, but but I want to come back to you all and say what you're thinking. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you a little bit more later about this, Paul. Um, sure, sure. We, my, uh, 
counselors came to me and they said they wanted me to develop a course where we meet every two weeks in the library and I coach people about writing their college entry exams and uh, the students were coming to the library and they would like to have them do that regularly like with the librarian so maybe that would be something interesting maybe we could work into making this be maybe a platform for them for that i don't know maybe. that'd be cool yeah thanks for sharing everything right. you're talking about kylie it's really really oh interesting. yeah thank you kylie. Yeah. absolutely i'm happy to I, last week paul Hankins again, was was right on the mark when he said, hey, we need to see what the AI does and then bring it back to the class and have a conversation about that. And I think that's what you're doing. Um, and it's in that conversation that there's going to be learning happening. Yeah. And, yeah, Paul, and I can't I, help I, with you. Go, go ahead. In, in Kylie's, starting with when we used to talk about multi-genre without really understanding, like, you know, um, uh, the multiple forms and frameworks for writing and then working in the multimodal. Uh, I can't help but feel like some of your success in the AI platforms mm. have come from an appreciation of what that looked like. Uh, again, so Paul and I talk about this often, you know, the 1.0 versus the 2.0, right? But that appreciation of multi-genre and multimodal, it's really hard to appreciate what we can do uh, with AI and how it can bring that back to us um, in mirror and also as receptor. So. Thanks, Kylie. Yeah, absolutely. Shane, you wanted to jump in there? Or... Yeah. Oh, I, I, I just think it. Um, I like a, the adding that article in as the extra information, and then demonstrating that if you know with Kylie, then going and showing her students that because that shows the iterative nature of the tool, and that it's about saying here's a framework for helping you help yourself. And now here's, here's ways to stimulate your thinking to work out, well, what's going to work best for you? Because someone goes, oh, well, that article that was from the, is all the things to avoid, that works for me. But someone else looks at that and goes, oh, that's so negative. I don't want that. <laughs> they, they go, well, I found this other article. I found this other way. And so to me, it's just yet another um, element you're adding in to go, here's a framework and then learn how to best adjust to help this get this tool to help you the way you need to be helped and that's what i love about the power of writing partners is it's it's the starting point to help you get the cool cool thanks shane and good morning over there by the way <laughs> thanks all right we should uh let you all go Thank you for coming by and uh, great conversation, folks. And Kylie, uh, yeah, let's let's keep it going next week. Um, invite your students again. It would be it would be cool if they want to come on and say stuff for themselves. Up yeah, to them. I don't know how. We don't know them all that well, but <laughs> if it makes I'll sense. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks, right. everyone. I'll talk Thank to you. you. Thank you, Thanks. Kylie. This is awesome. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Good night.